When Canada's right wing divided, it is popular to discuss the reform PC split. In another video, we talked about a different right wing split, the separatist PC split. It was in fact a three way split. In a different video, we discussed repercussions of a Bloc Québécois as official opposition. But there was a second parallel story in the right wing split that was falling into the background, building momentum the Western Reform Movement. Preston Manning became a celebrity in the world due to his father, Ernest, who was the Premier of Alberta and leader of the Social Credit Movement for a quarter of a century. Preston Manning became very critical of the PC party, feeling that it was selling out to Quebec interests and giving up on the West. Mulroney is elected to the largest majority in Canadian history. Well, Truman, your next you, question you had an option, sir. You could have said, I am not going to do it. This is wrong for Canada. And I am not going to ask Canadians to pay the price. You had an option, sir, to say no. And you chose to say yes I... to the old attitudes and the old stories of the Liberal Party. Manning is patient and continues to criticize the federal Tories over their lack of support for the West. The extraordinary increase in the price of petroleum products has caused the most dramatic reordering of wealth in Canadian history. The new West has become rich, and the old East, central Canada, has discovered it's dependent on the vast petroleum resources of the West for its economic well-being. When Charlottetown Accord comes by, Manning shines. He proclaims the Charlottetown Accord is a complete and utter betrayal of Canadian values and sells out to Quebec. Manning files for the Reform Party in 1987 and begins campaigning well in advance of the federal election. In 1988, he ran against Joe Clark in the Yellowhead riding and lost. In an unusual story, Preston Manning was campaigning door to door, and while walking up to a door, a small dog runs by him, and he accidentally steps on the dog's foot. The dog immediately yelps, and the owner comes forward, trying to save her dog. Manning looks at the woman and tells her, Good evening. I am running for Parliament, and my name is Joe Clark. She reports this to the PC party, describing Preston Manning to them, and deep personal divides continue between the leader of the Reform Party and the former and future leader of the PC Party. After the failure to get a single MP elected in 88, Preston Manning took elocution lessons to get rid of his Albertan accent, dental work to clean up his shoddy teeth, and a permanent hairstylist on staff to keep him looking good. The next part of branding was putting forward unique conservative values. He wants to make the party that is different, and what he calls conservative. The Reform Party initially refuses to take corporate and union donations, and will only take individual donations. Manning keeps in contact with donors and members through cassette tapes, which are delivered and tell a message on what people can do to help and how they would help. If the Reform Party existed today, they would be updating their members via YouTube. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil will handy. There's a number of things we're going to talk about that you may want to jot down, but if you're listening to this in your car, don't take your hands off the wheel just to do that. It was a grassroots organization that sought to usurp the corrupt PC and Liberal parties purely through the people. Manning had a lot of planks that became problems that are still deeply enshrined as election issues for all parties. At the time, though, he was the first. Manning sought to reform the Senate, choosing what is called the Triple E Senate style. This style of Senate would allow for provinces to elect their senators, at which point they would be appointed by the Governor General. To date, we still have parties calling for electoral reform in the Senate, with none really being able to do anything about it. But one of the things we agree on is that it is 2015, mm -hmm. Rosemary, and it's t high time we got rid of this unelected, unaccountable okay. Senate. But that would do anything to further entrench that unelected, unaccountable Senate. For the past two and a half years, since the Supreme Court decision and prior, I have not made any appointments to the Senate. There are now 22 vacancies in the Senate. Another major plank of the party that survives in the United Right is the hatred of Crown corporations. The Reform Party called for the privatization of CBC, Canada Post, and Petro-Canada. Today, Petro-Canada is a private entity owned by Suncor. On Aboriginals, the Reform Party believed in dismantling the Indian Act and the Department of Indian Affairs 
and simply transferring these over to local Aboriginal boards. First Nations people in Canada have been living under the auspices of the Indian Act for more than 130 years. This outdated paternalistic and colonial piece of legislation is what gives Indian Affairs and First Nations chiefs and band councils the power and control over First Nations peoples. Manning would be seen as a revolutionary and believed himself to be at war of values against the PCs and the Liberal Party. In his 1992 book, The New Canada, he challenged the very notion that Canada is a bilingual country. He saw that Canada was not in fact formed by two races, English and French, but instead a country of many races, English, French, Chinese, Indian, Ukrainian, Russians, Germans, Irish, Scottish, and Africans. His vision wasn't a multicultural united country, but one divided in which the federal government interfered as little as possible. In his new Canada, he sought to give the provinces all the power, but not give any special privileges to any particular citizens. Everyone would stand in a multicultural society on their own. He described the old Canada as a house divided against itself. He called a new Canada as a place that needs a new deal for Aboriginals, but also must be a country that can exist without Quebec. Canada has to be open to people and not discriminate based on language, race, or gender. And to that extent, he would have to be open to a new Quebec in line with what he calls real Canadian values. Manning saw his first opportunity at gold when a PC MP died and their seat opened up in Edmonton. In 1989, the Reform Party had their first MP, Deborah Gray. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the Prime Minister told me in question period that distinct society was something that he has subscribed to all along. Well, how soon he forgets, Mr. Speaker, because the Prime Minister certainly didn't believe in distinct society strongly enough to support the Meech Lake Accord when he was running for the Liberal leadership in 1990. Even John Turner recently has been surprised at the Prime Minister's conversion to the idea of distinct society in the Constitution. So my question is this, Mr. Speaker, it's very simple. Why the flip-flop? Why is he supporting distinct society and special status for Quebec now when he would not, could not support it in 1990? The Reform Party had candidates in the 88 election, but not one of them was elected. In 89, things were changing. Gray received triple the vote she had in 88. This would give the Reform Party a voice in Parliament. Deborah Gray would deliver Manning's voice to Parliament and allow him to get on the national debate. So when the Charlottetown Accord was being discussed, the Reform Party represented the only elected party opposing the deal. The death of the Charlottetown Accord would embolden the Reform Party, giving them strength to expand their reach out of Alberta and into the national stage. By the 1993 federal election, they were successful in attracting candidates from BC, the Prairies, Manitoba, and some in Ontario. The election results were indicative of many of the problems Manning had felt there was with Canada. Here was a party that attracted 2.5 million voters and received less seats than the bloc, who only had 1.8 million voters. The first major breakthrough was, however, only in Alberta and BC, with a few in Saskatchewan. The Reform Party's presence could not be seen anywhere else in Canada, and it seemed that their little movement was stifled on the Manitoba border. Manning's big downfall in Ontario was a perceived racism associated with the party. As seen in their platform, there wasn't too much in the way of direct racism. However, racist people were attracted to the party. Years later, Manning said that he fought with veracity of his father to purge the party of all racists and bigots. His own father, Ernest Manning, had a similar problem with the social credit movement and anti-Semitism. Ontario Reform MP, hopeful John Beck, had come out of and made remarks about fresh immigrants to the country. Beck, whose father owned a giant taxi company, would later be seen as neo-Nazi rallies, long after being ejected from the party. Every day was a new, hopefully, saying something ridiculous, and every day Manning removing them from the party slate. They were driven in by the Reform Party's hatred of multicultural and bilingual programs, and Manning spent his first year in office trying to get rid of them. In these years, the ability of the Reform Party to speak was limited, in part due to the allegations of racism, 
but also due to the fact that the bloc was the official opposition and was directing things towards a referendum. Without being in the spotlight and not being a key issue, the future of the party would depend on whether or not the bloc was successful in separation. They were not. Manning was in rebuilding mode, and that meant attracting a large cast of non-white candidates to the party. Rahim Jaffer is the first Muslim member of parliament, a reformer. He also attracted Inky Mark, a Chinese, and Gurmont Graywall, an Indian, to face a diversity in the party. We've all been there. You're a sitting prime minister whose party has been accused of harboring racist attitudes. Lucky for you, there's multiculturalism minister Tim Upple. He's always right behind you as if to say, if this guy's such a racist, then how come I'm hanging out with him? With all his work in 1997, Reform Party picked up enough seats to become the official opposition. As official opposition, they could bring forth... On February 10th, the Reform Party organized a special demonstration in the foyer of the Senate to highlight the possible return of Senator Andrew Thompson, who resides in Mexico. <laughs> that Senator Andrew Thompson feels welcome. If he comes back today, you know that he is to uh, show up in the Senate so that he will get his pay. I think Canadians are sick and tired of people who do not work for their wages, and he ought to be here because it's a slap in the face to the Canadian public, anyone who will just think that it's a joke that he's able to collect his pay without working for those wages. Are involved in joint command arrangements with British and American troops on the ground. I think the key to your question is, uh, you say, uh, we create uh, jobs or can we create jobs? And I think what we have here is a big choice between two alternative approaches as to how jobs are created. The conventional thinking in Ottawa, what's been espoused by the three traditional parties for a long time, is that big governments can create jobs. That they take money from taxpayers, they take it to Ottawa, they take an administrative bite out of it, and they spend it on so-called job creation. The, what that's done is give us 1.4 million unemployed, underemployed, many people concerned about jobs. The However, the Reform Party was still incapable of scoring any seats in Ontario. In this election, they even fielded candidates in Atlantic Canada and Quebec. Not a single MP. The Manitoba-Ontario border was set as a permanent dividing line between Canada's right and Canada's left. In 1998, former MP Stevie Harper and political scientist Tom Flanagan penned an influential paper that called for a united right. The paper set up principles that both the PCs and the foreign party shared, visions and frameworks in which the grassroots and provincial identity could be used in founding a party. The PC party rejected this notion in 1998 when they elected Joe Clark as their leader. Joe Clark, in fact, left his very safe riding in Atlantic Canada to try and reclaim an old PC stronghold in Ontario. The PCs had presence in Ontario and elected Canada. The Reform had presence in Western Canada. A united right, many people felt, would be a new governing party. The Reform, however, were just too extreme for most of Canada. A particular ad, attack ad came out attacking Quebec leaders and separatists. The key thing in a negative ad is you've got to have an element which that has resonance. You've got to say, does this have a whole lot of resonance? That people are already thinking in yeah, some way. Absolutely, you you don't make it up. <laughs> you 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 create you you are responding to what is already a pre-existing impression that you think people have. Manning was attempting to unite the right and felt he had to do this at a regional level as well. He made a political alliance with the Alberta PC Party, the Saskatchewan Party and the Manitoba PCs, as well as the BC Liberals who, despite their name, are very right-wing. Despite this, however, Manning began holding United Alternative Conventions, which were splitting Reform Party apart. Manning invited the PCs to this convention, who were arriving but not committed. If you take the popular vote of both parties in the 1997 election, what you get is a different party in charge. And so after a lot of debate, the Reform Party formally dissolved in 2000 to become the Canadian Alliance. A few PC MPs and supporters would join the new party, but that is a story for another time.